Hi, welcome to Pharma Instinct Clinical Research Interview Question Preparation Part 7. This quiz is based on informed consent form. You will get 5 seconds to pick the correct answer. The first question is. What information should be included in the introductory section of an informed consent form? Here are your options. A. Study results. B. Potential risks and benefits. C. Participants contact information. D. Purpose and procedures of the study. Your time starts now. The correct answer is D. Purpose and procedures of the study. This section provides a clear explanation of why the study is being conducted, its goals, and the specific procedures involved. Participants need to have a comprehensive understanding of what is expected of them and the overall purpose of the research. The next question is. How often should the informed consent form be reviewed with the participant during the study? Here are your options. A. Only at the beginning. B. Annually. C. Only when changes occur. D. At the end of the study. Your time starts now. The correct answer is C, only at the beginning. Before screening the participant, do you need to get the consent of the potential participants? This is a time when you explain to your participant about the study. The next question is, what is the primary purpose of the disclosure section in an informed consent form? Here are your options. A, to hide information about the study. B. To provide clear and complete information about the study. C. To discourage participants from reading the form. D. To exclude any mention of risks. Your time starts now. The correct answer is B. To provide clear and complete information about the study. The disclosure section of an informed consent form is designed to openly and transparently communicate all relevant details about the study to the participants. This includes information about the study's purpose, procedures, potential risks and benefits, confidentiality measures, and any other essential details that participants need to know in order to make an informed decision about their participation. The next question is. Informed consent forms should be translated into other languages. Here are your options. A. Only if the study involves international participants. B. Only if the study sponsor requests it. C. If potential participants speak languages other than the primary language of the site. D. If it is convenient for the research team. Your time starts now. The correct answer is C, if potential participants speak languages other than the primary language of the site. Informed consent forms should be translated into other languages when potential participants are more comfortable or proficient in languages other than the primary language of the research site. The next question is, what is the purpose of the vulnerable population section in an informed consent form? Here are your options. A. To discourage the participation of vulnerable individuals. B. To exclude vulnerable populations from the study. C. To address additional protections needed for vulnerable individuals. D. To ignore the needs of vulnerable populations. Your time starts now. The correct answer is C to address additional protections needed for vulnerable individuals. The purpose of the vulnerable population section in an informed consent form is to recognize and address the specific needs and additional protections required for individuals who are considered vulnerable. The next question is, informed consent is considered valid only if. Here are your options. A. The participant is a healthcare professional. B. The participant signs the form without reading it. C. The participant understands the information and voluntarily agrees. D. 
D. The study sponsor approves the consent form. Your time starts now. The correct answer is C. The participant understands the information and voluntarily agrees. Informed consent is considered valid when the participant has been provided with all relevant information about the research study, understands that information, and agrees to participate voluntarily without coercion. The next question is. When is the appropriate time to obtain informed consent from a potential participant in a clinical trial? Here are your options. A. After the study is completed. B. Before screening for eligibility. C. After randomization. D. During the data analysis phase. Your time starts now. The correct answer is B. Before screening for eligibility. The appropriate time to obtain informed consent from a potential participant in a clinical trial is typically before the screening for eligibility begins. The next question is. What is the purpose of including a statement about compensation in the informed consent form? Here are your options. A. To ensure participants receive extravagant rewards. B. To provide transparency about compensation for participation. C. To discourage participation. D. To exclude compensation altogether. Your time starts now. Answer is B. To provide transparency about compensation for participation. The purpose of including a statement about compensation in the informed consent form is to provide transparency and clarity regarding any compensation or rewards that participants may receive for their involvement in the study. The next question is. What is the purpose of the confidentiality section in an informed consent form? Here are your options. A. To ensure that participants share study details with others. B. To guarantee complete anonymity of participants. C. To inform participants about the study's public disclosure. D. To exclude participants from confidentiality protections. Your time starts now. The correct answer is B. To guarantee complete anonymity of participants. The purpose of the confidentiality section in an informed consent form is to assure participants that their personal information and data will be kept confidential and that their identity will be protected to the extent permitted by law. Thank you for staying till the last make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Remember to press the bell icon and also comment your score down below. To build your career and get more information about clinical research, join our course by calling us on 985-560-3224 or visit www.fistar.in.